Uh, hello. Uh, it's me again. It's me, Douglas Truth. Uh, with my trusty nonverbal communication device, aka guitar. With me. Alright, um. Anybody else uh, completely freaking out? Anybody? Uh, I imagine it's probably just myself who uh, has trouble sleeping. Worried about my fate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come clean here to the potential and probably likely embarrassment of myself and other people, but... So I'm worried, I'm anxious. I mean, I've been having anxiety attacks like I've never had in my whole life, ever. And it's, conf it's a confluence of different factors some of which I can mention and some of which I can't. The ones I can mention, I'm sure, are all very familiar to you, like, uh, okay, like the end of the world uh, from various reasons, like climate change, um, war in Syria, like maybe starting today, I'm not sure, uh, what, when they've scheduled it for. Um, everybody's so fucking crazy that, you know, people are just out in the streets shooting each other. The guitar really helps me maintain a little bit of calm. Because it gets me out of my head. And I, and I, you know, I mean, this is a subject for a much, much longer talk, one that lasts years and years, about how our minds fuck us up and fuck up the world and everything. So we've got to get back into our bodies, you know, blah, 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 you know, the, so do some yoga, focus on your breathing, just don't let your mind run out of control. Because that's what's got, that's all these differences that people are so excited about that they're shooting each other in the streets in the air are all made up they're all fantasies they're all they're all uh, conjured is the right word it's black magic they conjure these things the words literally drive us mad I mean they can they can serve other purposes as well but it's easier to use them to, to harm others and harm ourselves like Philip K. Dick said in one of his books, maybe it was Vallis, but he had been hospitalized for uh, attempted suicide. And one of his practitioners said the magic words to him that, that healed him. And Philip K. Dick very wisely said, I think anybody, anybody on the street intuitively knows the right words to pick, to destroy you, to harm you. He said only very special people know the right words to say, to heal you. And it rarely happens. So, the thing I was, I'm beating around the bush trying to get to is the idea that is that the worst thing that we can do in these times, besides go out in the street and shoot people, you know, I'm just assuming that none of you are going to do that today or tomorrow. The worst thing we can do is to, is to think of our own survival. To see everything come crashing down, you know, however you, however you see that happening whether it's Mexicans coming across the border or jihadists in Virginia or climate change or Trump, whatever you're seeing as, as the modality of planetary destruction. If your response is to think, how do I survive? Then you're on the wrong fucking track. It doesn't, for one thing, it's, it's not helpful. It, it's not an advantage to think that way. Really, believe me, it doesn't work. Because it's not up to us. Our survival is too arbitrary, too accidental. And, 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 and mind that I'm not talking about, you know, just being sensible. You know, just being sensible, putting on your seatbelt. I'm not talking about driving without your seatbelt because you, you're not worried about self, you know, preservation. I'm talking about taking it to an extreme. And of course, everybody's going to define that in a different way. But I mean the extreme of anxiety, because that's what I'm feeling, right? That's what I'm talking about. Why well, can't you? I mean, here's the embarrassing part. I inherited some money, enough so that I could have been comfortable had I uh, worked a little bit more and had I saved a little bit more. I would be comfortable now. I could, I could, I could buy a bar in Costa Rica and hang out. I could be comfortable, but I'm not now. I spent it for reasons which I will not divulge. 
I think it was my soul's purpose, frankly. I think I got myself into this difficulty because it was necessary to my development. My financial advisor doesn't think much of that train of thought. So I wake up in the middle of the night thinking, what am I going to do? Am I going to be homeless? Probably not. Am I going to be distressed? Yes, I am. But that leads down the rat hole of self-preservation. I had breakfast with a dear friend this morning. We talked about forming what, what might seem like the, the lamest response you could possibly imagine to any kind of upset in the world or personal. We're going to start drumming on Friday nights. I'm telling you. I mean, don't laugh. Try it. You know, do the yoga. Try to get into your fucking body. Out of your absolutely mad head. Everybody's head is completely mad. Our, our culture, our society, almost demands that we spend all of our time in the monkey mind. You know, the, it's, like a, it's like a chimpanzee with a typewriter. Giving all the orders. Not, I mean, chimpanzees are very, you know, I, I, it's a shame that we, 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 we cast such aspersions on monkeys when we want to say something bad about people because we're the killer apes. We're the mad, crazy primates with weapons of mass destruction. Death Star's got nothing on us. So, before I ramble on too long, you know, and I don't know the names of these chords, or even if they are chords. To me, they're, they're kind of worlds, like this one. Kind of a minor thing. So I'm having breakfast with my friend. We're talking about starting a drumming circle. Because we think it's really important. And my mood, my energy changed because all of a sudden I was thinking about how what I do could be a benefit to others. Here's today's preaching moment from Douglas Truth. Try. Try, try. Just experiment for a week. When you get that self-preservation, when the worry, the anxiety, come on, come over, like, what's going to become of me? I'll tell you, you're going to die eventually. Maybe tomorrow or the next day. Next week, next year, 20 years, 50 years, 70 years. You know, for the kids, for the youngins watching the show today, maybe a hundred years, ninety years. Nevertheless, I can with certainty predict your end. So why worry about it? Frankly, I mean that's not a that's not a question I just throw out there, you know, like a joke. Why worry about it? It's demonstrably unhelpful. Demonstrably unhelpful helpful. What is demonstrably helpful is not a matter of conjecture or woo-woo, is thinking about how you can help others get through this mess or get through the day, you know, simply by being kind to yourself whenever the opportunity arises and to everybody else. I, got, I just planted some nasturtiums outside. I love nasturtiums. And roses, they're like the, op, the opposite ends of the spectrum of flowerdom. The nasturtiums, you know, they, they, they thrive in poor soil. You know, I've got some in a, in a planters out on the deck, nice planting soil, and then just barely growing. I, I put some seeds out, practically the gravel next to the driveway, and they love it. Big, round solar collectors tilting along with the sun as it passes overhead. I love nasturtiums, plus the fact that you can eat them, and plus the fact that their seeds are capers. So it's been really hot here recently, you know, global warming, end of the world, so forth. And my little, I didn't water my little nasturtiums. They started to wilt and fall over. Well, probably I didn't think of them because I was so concerned about what's going to happen to little Dougie next year or the year after, the year after. 
I really don't need to worry about what's going to happen in three years. So, you can see... Um, I want an addendum here, addendum here about being of help. I wanted to stress that, I mean, you, you have to get an intuition for this because it's, um, there, aren't, there aren't any real rules for this, but the idea of being of help to others, I mean, it's a lot of times there's an arrogance involved, you know, that I can help you, and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, you know, thinking about how I can help this person poor, distraught person. Rarely do we know actually what to do at all. If somebody's hungry, feed them, yes. If they don't have clothes, give them clothes. Yeah. Simple stuff, sure. But what I'm talking about is, is cultivating in yourself the idea that you wish to be of service. That's, that's a safer, a safer way to think about it. And as and because each of us is different, each day is different, each encounter is different. If you're always trying to calculate how you can help somebody, you know we're not that smart, I don't think. But if you cultivate the idea that you wish to be of service, then I think you know we'll make mistakes. Certainly, we always do. That's our we have to. That's how we learn. But I'm talking about two like like general general moods or uh, what's the right word? It's not. It's but it, but like for me when I descend into the self-preservation, what will become of me? Which sounds more desperate. That's why I use that phrase instead of what's going to happen to me. What's going to become of me is more desperate because that's where I go. And it's a terrible place. It, it serves no one, least of all myself. What's going to become of me? Well, I'm going to die. And then I think, this is my intuition, is that some part of me survives that process. And then I'll be back. Not, not, not me. Not the Douglas truth that i am spent all my life with. Probably not. But some part of me that's been transformed by this life that I'm living right now. And that would be a success. Not surviving. Surviving, yeah, as long as, as is helpful, as is necessary. But the idea that just for the sheer fear of not being here anymore, what's going to become of me? Super unhelpful. And so I guess that's why I, and not just me, but I mean, it's pretty common. When you think about the idea of being kind, well, everybody knows what that means. To be on the receiving or the giving end of it, either way. I mean, somebody can try to help you. And they can be entirely, uh, you know, kindness can be entirely absent from that transaction. Like I said, a lot of times there's arrogance and condescension. But if you're being kind, truly kind, you make no mistakes, ever. 